that's a nicer breeze. It's actually been windy out on the water. Um, the afternoons all week have been pretty windy, so I haven't been able to get out that far, um, except for a couple of days that we got early in the week. Anyway, welcome back to the cabin. Um, lots and lots of questions, especially from newer viewers, about uh, why I char all these timbers. And uh, of course, if you've heard this many times if you've been around for a while, but this helps prevent rot. Um, charcoal uh, stops bugs from from uh, boring into it. Um, it also stops fungus from growing, getting a foothold into it, and the moisture that feeds that fungus and bacteria that breaks down the wood. It uh, it slows down that process considerably. Um, if you look around, well, you won't be able to see it right now, but. I've shown you in other videos some of the stumps that I've found from a fire that appears to have burned anywhere between 85 and 100 years ago. I don't know, have any history of it, I don't know the background exactly, but um, I'm guessing that age because most of the trees that I've cut down have been in the 85 year range or, or younger. Um, mind you, there's you know a growth phase at the beginning that's really hard to see those growth rings, so it could be closer to 90 or 100 years. Uh, those stumps are still there you know, in the ground showing like full charcoal charcoal rings and stuff that showing that they have not rotted or everything else has been rotted I don't see any other stumps that are just uh, rotted that from that period they're all, all gone completely the ones that are not charred so that's why I'm doing this it started with uh, it's Japanese technique for for preserving wood that was used mostly for exterior applications and then oiled. I'm doing it below grade. It's just too much surface area for me to oil. I don't have that much oil. Um, so what I'm doing instead is protecting it with this waterproofing membrane on the exterior and wrapping that right underneath so that the bottom timber is also protected from the sand and any dampness that could be in there and, the f and then fully encapsulated so that waterproof membrane goes under, up, and then on top. So no water can get at this. It would only be moisture from the high humidity that would be in here at certain times of the year from the ground naturally. Um, and then any of the exposed timbers like out here that are not going to be wrapped, I am oiling those with linseed oil because that's what I have. Um, it's kind of expensive though. So I'm not only doing it where I absolutely have to do. Then I'll do some interior oiling as well on surfaces that are going to continue to be exposed or I might do a lime wash on the interior which I kind of prefer to do that actually because it'll also lighten it up down here it's going to be very dark I'm obviously I assume most of you know, realize that this is my underground root cellar as well so it's the foundation for the cabin so rather than doing footings four feet down I went four feet underground and then built a basement so it's four feet down so that's below our, our frost line and then uh, two or three three feet essentially above grade then I'll do a I'll backfill a little bit to taper it so it's a couple of things that does it it's less pressure when it's only four maybe four and a half feet of soil up against the wall so less soil pressure pushing in and it gives me the height that I want for snow load on the exterior as well so be, um, problem with that is because I'm putting so much above the ground I don't fully benefit from a full underground cellar from the stable earth temperature so what I'll have to do is I'm putting uh, rigid foam insulation on the exterior two inches I think that's about R5 per inch say, so say R10 on the outside and then these are full six inch studs so I'll f uh, fill that cavity with insulation as well so at least another R uh, 20 so I'm going to end up in the R25 to R30 range um, uh, floor which is going to start about here and I'm standing at six inches of sand here as well that I still have to finish digging out that'll be about here and that's going to have an eight inch floor framing um, so those joists are going to be uh, eight inches deep full eight inches deep and I'm going to insulate that fully as well so this whole space will be fully insulated the ground will stay sand so I'll get that air that uh, earth temperature coming up to keep it cool down here I can dampen it I can just throw water on here if I don't find it's humid enough for the for the fruits and vegetables that I'm going to store down here 
and I'm going to put a drainage pipe in so they can drain water out if there's ex excessive water that actually seeps into the building somehow. I do have drainage pipe around the outside but I have a feeling that's redundant because the sand percolates so well the water just goes straight through it. In fact this spring when the snow melted um, there's still frost everywhere in, on regular ground so like frozen solid. Here there's only a little crust I actually stuck a shovel into that and like after removing some snow and there was no freezing at all in the ground or I could dig sand as if it was middle of the summer. So the water just goes straight through it so quickly that it doesn't even freeze. So I'm, I'm assuming then I'm going to have really good drainage and never see water in here. Now what I am doing is drilling a uh, driving a sandpoint well here like I did in the greenhouse. So it'd be a well inside the cabin so that um, it doesn't freeze so I can use it year round. Um, that's going to be somewhere close to the corner underneath where the kitchen's going. Then I have this great big uh, 1000 liter tote, water tote, that's going to be in here. And what I'll do is pump water from the well into that, fill that up so that's a reservoir I can draw water from um, in larger quantities with no interruption for cooking, cleaning, and, and uh, bathing. And then um, that will also be a, a big mass that's going to stop things from freezing in here again in the winter if it gets uh, gets quite cold. So I'm assuming that um, I think it's all going to work. Now the other thing I need is ventilation. So this, I have to put a wall here, but I'm going to wait until the ceiling is on and everything's watertight and I'm insulating. And I'll put a wall dividing this back room, which is because it's nine feet by ten feet. So probably nine feet. It's ten nine feet by nine feet exactly in, inside actually. Yeah. So nine feet by nine feet. I'm gonna divide that in, in two, so I've got four and a half feet minus the six inches for a wall there's so four and a quarter feet across. Two foot door to walk in. I'll have shelves all along here, along that back wall and um, that's going to be for, for storing fruit or vegetables or both. Uh, that side is going to be probably fruit and vegetables as well, whichever like apples and potatoes aren't good to store together for example. Um, so I put, I'll separate them that way and I may end up even putting another like closet in the back corner of one of these sections that I can cure meat in. I won't eat a huge huge section yeah maybe if that back three or four feet was divided I could do that separately so I've got some um, ways I can do it here anyway on that side the tote is going to go into that corner underneath the window which is part of the ventilation so full-size window in that section two probably four or six inch pipes coming out of each each of these two sections for for ventilation and then that door over there I can leave that open to get air flow down into this section because that door will be inside a uh, heated space. So I, I'm going to have lots of ventilation. So anyway, the tote will go back into that corner beside the well, which is just a pipe coming out of the ground with a pump on it. And then that whole section, that whole wall on there, which is nine feet long, that's available for, for storage. And potentially either on that wall or this wall is where I'll put my battery bank for the solar power that I'm running to this cabin. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, probably over there. Anyway, that's uh, hopefully answering some of your questions about this phase of the construction. Um, it's going slower than I thought. Just the burning of the timbers takes absolutely forever. Getting them back here, getting them milled. Uh, mills, uh, as you've seen, part way back through the bush and uh, skinning trees to it, getting it milled, getting it burnt and hauling them all back here by four-wheeler especially these big uh, six by eights it is a ton of work it's been taking me I started that I can't even remember in the spring sometime so that's all done now all the wood I think is prepared it's uh, mostly charred ready to go ready to be installed a few more wall sections to do and then I have some for the interior walls and then I can start pulling the logs into place here and uh, start cutting them, getting them ready to go. So probably another week I would say at least though before I get these heavy timbers on, get the floorboards. Oh yeah, the floor joists, that's going to take 
a day, I guess, to finish milling those up. So yeah, at least a couple of weeks more of doing this part. Told you this was a boring phase until I get going on the cabin. The logs themselves is going to be slow paced. But anyway, it's summer and I'm going to take out time out to enjoy it. As you saw on the other channel, Kelly suffered from heat stroke yesterday. So just not going to push it on those hot days with her with me. Uh, we'll get out and enjoy the water instead. Anyway. <laughs> That's it. So if you want to follow along this year, 2021 playlist, bottom left hand corner of the screen and the bottom or the top left hand corner of the screen is the latest video, most recent upload. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it and look forward to seeing you at the cabin next time. Take care.